Code Canvas is a new user interface for Microsoft Visual Studio that we are prototyping at Microsoft Research. With Code Canvas, all of a project's documents are placed side by side on a single design surface. The screen currently shows a portion of a Tetris game I'm working on. We can see a dialog box sitting next to a code file written in C Sharp. The code implements a class called EnterName, stored in a file called EnterName.cs. Code Canvas's presentation of this class hides a lot of the boilerplate code, like the using statements and namespace declaration, and instead concentrates on the important content, namely the class's members. This is just a view of the class. The underlying file still contains the boilerplate code. This is not just a picture of the project. Both the dialog box and the code file are presented using Visual Studio's standard editors. So, for example, I can add a button to the dialog box, I can also edit the code file using the standard features such as IntelliSense. By default, all of the class's members are shown together in a single editor. However, if I want, I can break up the class into fragments that I find more meaningful. If I place the text cursor inside a method name, Code Canvas provides a drag handle around the method. I can then use direct manipulation to place the method where I like. Code Canvas automatically prevents the fragments from overlapping one another. It also automatically resizes the boxes representing both the class and the file to preserve the containment relationships. Again, these fragments are just a view of the underlying code file. As I edit the code, Code Canvas automatically resizes the fragments to grow or shrink them so that all the content is shown. If necessary, Code Canvas moves other fragments to make room for new content. Because of this, there are no scroll bars anywhere in Code Canvas. All content is always shown in full on the design surface. Instead of scrolling, Code Canvas uses panning and zooming for navigation. I can drag the background to pan the canvas back and forth. I can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Now that I've zoomed out, we can see the entire project. In fact, we like to think of Code Canvas as providing a map of the project. This map reflects both the project's content and its structure. For example, we can see that this project is organized into three directories. The directory figures, shown in blue, contains the class figure and its seven subclasses. This directory lives inside the directory Tetris Control, shown in green. This directory contains several classes and user interface designs. Finally, the topmost directory, Tetris, shown in brown, contains one additional class. Code Canvas uses a technique called semantic zoom to show as much useful content as it can at all levels of zoom. At this level of zoom, the code is too small to read, so Code Canvas pops up labels that show the names of the members with icons to distinguish fields, methods, and events. Notice that as I zoom in and out, Code Canvas keeps the labels at the same readable text size. It crops labels to prevent unreadable overlaps. Also, notice that there's a pecking order among the labels. As a fragment gets smaller, Code Canvas compresses the labels of private members first, since those tend to be less important. This map visualization is organized into a series of layers showing different types of information. We can turn these layers on and off individually. For example, if I'm not interested in how the project is stored on disk, I can switch off the file and folder layers. This makes the individual classes much easier to see. Since these layers are useful for staying oriented, I'll switch them back on. As another example, Code Canvas also provides an annotation layer where I can place sticky notes on top of the code. For example, I previously took screen snapshots of the seven types of Tetris figures and added them in sticky notes next to the classes that implement them. These provide visual landmarks that help me quickly locate the different figures. They also serve as documentation for someone who doesn't know the code. There are additional layers that are designed to answer different types of questions about the code. For example, let's say I want to know how the game keeps track of the player's score. So, I do a text search for the word score. Visual Studio pops up the usual tool window with all the search results. This is useful for seeing all the results together in one place. But I'm more interested in what parts of the code contain these results. For this, 
Code Canvas has a search results layer that uses these yellow boxes to show where the search results occur in the code. If I click on a search result, Code Canvas zooms in on that part of the code. Notice that, even though I zoomed in, Code Canvas kept all the search results on screen. If a search result occurs in a file that's currently off screen, Code Canvas shows it as a semi transparent ghost. A ghost sticks to the edge of the screen in the direction of the file that contains the search result. If I click on a ghost, the screen pans over to where the search result is located. These ghosts allow me to continue to see all the search results as I navigate around and give me a general sense of which direction contains the most search results. Another useful layer shows the debugger call stack. To see it, let's run this Tetris game. Now I'll start a new game. After the game starts, the debugger hits a breakpoint. The statement containing the breakpoint is shown large and in red. This is another example of semantic zoom. This layer also shows a series of curved arrows to indicate the flow of execution. I can use the slider at the top of the layer to see the execution in order. The execution starts in main, then goes to the callback for the new game menu item, then to init new game, and so on until we see it create a left T figure. Because of Code Canvas's layers, I can look at the call stack and my search results at the same time. This makes it easy to compare information from different sources. For example, I can see that, so far in our execution, the only executed code that deals with scores is this initialization of the score to zero. While this map provides a handy overview of the entire project, this may be more detailed than I want for a given task. For example, since I'm using the debugger, I really want to concentrate on the current call stack. To do this, I can create what we call a filtered canvas. A filtered canvas contains just those parts of the code that are involved in a given layer, in this case the call stack layer. This new filtered canvas shows only those fragments that are on the current call stack. Notice that Code Canvas automatically pulled these fragments closer together to make good use of the screen, but kept the fragments in the same relative spatial positions. This helps keep me oriented in this new view. Code Canvas allows me to create any number of canvases with a tab for each one. To switch tasks, I switch tabs. All canvases are automatically saved. The next time I start Visual Studio, I can reopen my previous canvases. This persistence is intended to help programmers deal with interruption and multitasking.